when I walk in the stall and sit down, um, like 30 seconds in, I start to hear this lady like ranting and raving about trans people and it and identities and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, she's probably talking about me. Check out your identity in your bedroom. Like when I start recording, I am a little confused because I've never had a problem um, going to the bathroom since cutting my hair short. But um, for some reason, I knew she was talking about me. Are you a man or a woman? Why does that matter? Well, because you're in a ladies room. Okay. And I have gotten called out several times for being in the men's room. Okay. And you're going to be called out for whatever you're doing. So what are you identifying as today? I don't think that's any of your business. Figure out your identity in your bedroom, uh -huh. okay? okay? And then project it on everybody else and we'll accept it. Uh -huh. This is not acceptable. Let's go get security. Yes, yeah, let's, let's do that. Um, she's harassing me for being in the bathroom. What's going on? Well, I'm asking her what her identity is. It's my girlfriend. So hold on, yes, woman. It's your girlfriend. Cool. So yes, it's yeah, a girl. Have to have doesn't matter. Care. So the people asking why I didn't tell her what my identity was, it doesn't matter if I'm trans or not. I literally went in there to go to the bathroom to go pee. So the fact that she followed me into the bathroom thinking that I was a trans child to harass me and bully me out of the stall is unacceptable because I was literally going to the bathroom, minding my business. You just watched a cis woman explain how she was harassed while going to the bathroom simply because a transphobe suspected that she was trans due to her having short hair. Now, that happened a little more than a year ago, but the climate since then has gotten so much more toxic to the point where children are now increasingly the victims of harassment from these adult transvestigators. In fact, it happened last week at a track meet at a school in Kelowna, Canada, and a local affiliate explains two Kelowna moms are speaking out after their nine-year-old daughter was verbally assaulted at a track and field event on Thursday at Kelowna's Apple Bowl. The mothers who chose not to identify their daughters say she was competing in a shot put event when a grandfather of one of the other participants started yelling at her. Quote, she went to step up to compete for the fourth grade shot put final, and right before she went to throw, a grandfather of a student said, hey, this is supposed to be a girl's event, and why are you letting boys compete? My daughter is cisgender, born female, uses she, her pronouns. She has a pixie haircut, said mom Heidi Starr. Starr says the man then carried on to demand certification to prove that her daughter was born female. He stopped the entire event. He also pointed at another girl who also had short hair. He then piped in and said, well, if she is not a boy, then she is obviously trans. Star said the man's wife then started calling her a genital mutilator, a groomer, and a pedophile. Yeah. Now, thankfully, the superintendent has confirmed that the school is currently taking steps to ban this man permanently from all future school related sporting events. But I mean, the story really tells you a lot about the current climate that we're in. Right. This happened in Canada, but it's the same, if not worse, in the United States. Bigots are now transvestigating children who they so much as perceive to be trans. And the main reason that this is happening is because that little girl had short hair. I mean, think about how deranged this is. If you have a little girl who gets a pixie cut, now a bigot might think that they are trans. This is affecting cis people as well. That's how broad the transphobia is in our society. Now, there's this caricature about trans people that the right has created, specifically when it comes to trans people in sports, which probably explains the hypersensitivity of the jackass in this particular story. But I mean, there's this caricature where conservatives believe that there's this insecure man who can't athletically compete with the other men, so he chooses to identify as a woman specifically so he can dominate them in some sport. And this transphobic trope has been reinforced in pop culture on shows like South Park. But in actuality, this isn't a thing that is happening. Yet, the hysteria has led to trans and cis people getting harassed and trans students being excluded from school sports. Now, if this problem was so widespread with trans people just dominating female sports, then you would think that there'd be a plethora of examples of trans middle and high schoolers just crushing the competition, right? 
But in 2021, when the Associated Press reached out to two dozen conservative politicians who sponsored legislation banning trans girls from school sports in 20 different states, guess what they found? Quote, in almost every case, sponsors cannot cite a single instance in their own state or region where such participation has caused problems. And get this, GOP lawmakers in states like South Carolina and Tennessee even admitted that there might not even be a single transgender athlete in their entire state. But they justified this legislation by calling it proactive because they care about women's sports and little girls sports. Yeah, very interesting. You know, now, you would think that they'd have plenty of examples given how much time they spend focusing on this issue, but they couldn't cite a single example. These are the people writing the legislation. Isn't that interesting? Now, there's a reason why they can't cite a single example. And as Newsweek explains, privacy laws make it tough to identify the exact number of transgender athletes competing in public school sports, but researcher and medical physicist Joanna Harper estimates that the number can't exceed 100 nationwide. Now, to be clear, that's at the college level. It's just an estimate, but the number is very small. But what about K-12? through Well, Harvard Law's Alejandro Carballo, who's been tracking anti-trans legislation now for years, estimates that there is only 50 50 trans athletes in schools nationwide. Furthermore, Newsweek continues, Jillian Brandstetter, a spokesperson for the American Civil Liberties Union, said the number of transgender athletes isn't comprehensive, but she's also certain it's a very small portion of the nation's population. Brandstetter told Newsweek that Save Women Sports, an organization advocating for banning transgender athletes from competing in girls' sports, identified only five transgender athletes competing on girls' teams in school sports for grades K through 12. Now, I want to stress that the organization, the main organization dedicated to advocating that trans girls should be banned from playing school sports can name just five trans athletes competing on girls' teams. It's a big country, and all they could find was just five examples. In other words, there are more Americans who were literally bitten by a shark than there are trans athletes at the K through 12 level. In fact, the total number of trans athletes barely surpasses the average number of people struck by lightning every single year, which is 28, by the way. And sadly, you are statistically far more likely to die from gun violence in this country than you are to even encounter a trans athlete. But despite this reality, conservative propagandists have successfully elevated the salience of this issue to the point where we've seen a sharp increase in the number of Americans who don't want trans athletes to play with cis athletes. Even Democrats saw a seven-point jump, according to this Gallup poll, since 2021, when again, the number of trans athletes is statistically insignificant. But despite the statistical unlikelihood that your child is going to compete with a trans child, well, everybody has been worked into a frenzy to where now these adults are transvestigating children, accusing them of being trans and thus having some sort of an unfair biological advantage simply because of the hairstyle that they have, as was the case with Kelowna. But I don't want to make it seem as if trans athletes are some mythical creatures because they do exist. And their stories are also very important. So let's talk about one trans athlete in the state of Kentucky. Her name is Fisher Wells. She was a seventh grader when she helped form her school's all-female hockey team. Nobody really was playing, but she got her friends together. They created a league for themselves. And when she learned that her state lawmakers were proposing a ban on trans athletes in school sports that would affect her, well, she decided to speak up. And I don't want to share her story. I'm going to let her share her own story because this is important. I'm Fisher Wells, and I would like to tell you my experience um, on the Westport girls' field hockey team. Before, um, well, after COVID and we were just getting back in, the girls' field hockey team barely existed. It was just a thing that Westport had that nobody joined because everybody wanted to play, like, volleyball or something. Um, but then, uh, three people signed up. Uh, one of them was me. And I tried my very hardest to get minimum amount of people for the team and we got that and on our first game 
I got news that I couldn't play, and so I didn't play. I sat at home um, watching television. Um, and then I got so many texts from my friends supporting me, and then, yeah, I got these wonderful pictures. We tied on that game, barely, by the way, which was fun. Um, but later it was resolved, and then I started to find out how disgusting the reason I couldn't play was. I really don't want this bill to pass because that means I can't play, and it will be extremely detrimental to my mental health as well. Um, because I know that sports is a great way for me to cope with things. Like, it's just a good way for me to cope with things. Um, and it's why I recovered so very quickly from not being able to play because later, like a few days later, I found out I could play and I was able to play and have fun and like every, like my coach was crying. Like she was like, oh my God, Fisher. Um, I just, it's disgusting that this bill is even suggested. It's terrible, and I've worked really hard and practiced so many hours. Um, I hope you don't vote on this bill, and I hope I can play in eighth grade. Thank you. So I referenced the Associated Press report about how Republican lawmakers couldn't cite any examples of trans athletes causing disruptions at their schools. But in theory, it's much harder to pass a really cruel policy like these trans athlete bans when you see the face of the person who you're going to be affecting, right? And because Fisher is the only known trans athlete in her state, this law would literally just affect her. So she showed up to tell her story and say, please, let me play with my friends. But even though this little girl took the time to explain to Republican lawmakers in Kentucky that the girls hockey team, one, would not exist without her, and two, that her friends wanted to play with her, do you want to know what those Republicans did? Guess. They voted overwhelmingly in favor of banning her from the team that she helped to create. In fact, they overrode the governor's veto, even though they knew the law would affect one child in seventh grade who was hoping to be able to play in eighth grade. Now, maybe Fisher's story resonated with you, maybe it didn't, but I know exactly what you're going to say if you are not inclined to support trans people. You're going to say, Mike, we have to prevent these trans girls from playing with cis girls in order to maintain fairness and protect women's sports. We've heard this a lot, but here's the thing. The people who are passing these laws, they don't actually care about women's sports or girls' sports. And I say this because if they did, then where the fuck is their outrage for things like this? I got something to show y'all. So for the NCAA March Madness, the biggest tournament in college basketball for women, this is our weight room. Let me show y'all the men's weight room. Now, when pictures of our weight room got released versus the men's, the NCAA came out with a statement saying that it wasn't money, it was space that was a problem. Let me show y'all something else. Here's our practice court, right? And then here's that weight room. And then here's all this extra space. If you aren't upset about this problem, then you're a part of it. That was Sedona Prince. She is a female athlete who pointed out the inequities between the men's and women's teams at the University of Oregon. And what she's saying is that this is the problem. And if you care about women's sports, you should care about this. But what do conservatives do? They plug their ears and they point to trans athletes as the problem. Not what actual female athletes are saying are the problems affecting their sports. But as the human rights campaign puts it, the real threat to women's sports isn't transgender athletes. It's underfunding and lack of resources. And this is because women's sports receives far less funding than men's sports on average, with schools spending an estimated 71 cents on women's sports for every dollar they spend on men's sports. And when you look at sports funding across the board, specifically when it comes to travel, equipment, and recruitment, the disparities here are clear. So Kentucky Republicans who banned Fisher Wells from her state's hockey team under the pretense of protecting women's sports, 
I mean, why haven't they addressed the $7,600 plus disparity in funding between men's sports and women's sports? Other states that we've briefly mentioned here, like Tennessee and South Carolina, are perfectly fine, presumably, with $3,000 and $2,000 differences in funding, respectively, between men and women's sports. But yet they called their sponsoring of anti-trans sports bans them just being proactive. What about being proactive when it comes to the actual problems plaguing women's sports and funding is obvious but really it goes much deeper than funding it also comes down to how female athletes are treated compared to men ali kirshner who is a woman's coach for stanford detailed the differences between male and female athletes at the 2021 march madness tournament and this is what she spoke about not only were there notable differences in facilities but also in food and merchandise as well in other photos shared by players there was a visible difference in the caliber and quantity of what was received by the women teams from the event organizers. Men received enormous swag bags and high quality food, while the women's teams only received a few merchandise items and lesser quality food. But I mean, the disparities in funding and treatment of female athletes, these have been long documented, but yet Republicans, they got everyone to believe that it's the trans athletes. They're the ones who are the real danger to women's sports. And this should be obvious, but I'm going to say it anyway. These conservatives don't care about women's sports at all, period. They concern troll about fairness in women's sports as a pretense to push transphobia, and that's why they do it. That's why they talk about this. But unfortunately, it's working. Even well-intentioned people who should know better are getting duped by the right's propagandistic trans panic that they've been pushing with regard to this issue. For example, someone I respect, like Ryan Grimm, responded to the Gallup poll we talked about earlier, which found that a majority of Americans are opposed to trans and cis athletes playing together. And he recommended an all-gender category as a solution, but Emma Viglin, who also does sports commentary, responded saying that this is a bad idea because the societal interest of including trans people in our social institutions, not in separate but equal categories, trumps arbitrary standards of competition in sports. We're talking incredibly small numbers here. Your solution others and isolates trans people. And she's absolutely correct about that. Now, Ryan Grimm followed up by asking, what's meant by separate but equal here? Here. There shouldn't be separate categories or leagues. Emma responded saying, I mean that trans girls and women are girls and women, so they should be able to participate in female leagues. Designating this minuscule number of trans girls and women as a separate category based on dubious claims of unfairness opens the door to further discrimination and alienation. But Ryan pushed back, adding, the claims are not inherently dubious. Male bodies have athletic advantages on average. That's why the leagues are separate. I actually think the Biden Title IX proposal is pretty good. It allows trans girls and women to play in female leagues unless there's some articulable risk slash issue. Finally, Emma responded, saying, competition is all about advantages and disadvantages. Should Yao Ming have been banned from the NBA for height advantage? Gender affirming care, hormones for trans kids, would smooth without any theoretical advantage. In the meantime, trans people should be able to pursue their dreams. Now, David Dole chimed in asking, are you familiar with Michael Phelps? Should there be a separate league for people with these sorts of advantages? Should there be a separate NBA for players over 6'3"? And the paragraphs that David shares here explains how Phelps has a disproportionately vast wingspan. He's also double jointed in his ankles, which gives his kicks more range, which obviously is a benefit when swimming. And he's even less prone to fatigue since his body produces half the lactic acid of typical athletes. And if you claim to care about fairness in sports, then the points that Emma Viglin and David Dole are making are absolutely crucial. I mean, should Michael Phelps' opponents have called for him to be banned because he has undeniable biological advantages? Should Muggsy Bogues, who's 5'3", been able to petition the NBA to sideline all of his opponents who are more than a foot taller than him? I mean, if we care about fairness in sports, then why are these questions thought to be so unreasonable, but yet we make an exception when it comes to unfairness, when it comes to gender? Gender is where we draw the line at fairness and unfairness in sports? Really? That's the hill that we're choosing to die on because reasons? Well, we know what those reasons are. The reasons are transphobia. The reasons are bigotry. And propaganda is a very powerful tool. And again, conservatives 
have been able to convince a majority of Americans that trans people, they're the real danger to women's sports. They've even convinced people who should know better, like Ryan Grimm. When he's falling for the propaganda, for this non-issue, that really goes to show you how repetition and just being loud pays off in politics. But again, trans people in sports is not an issue. But what is an issue is the treatment of trans people in this country, in other countries. Trans people exist, and they've always existed, and they're going to continue to exist. But their existence is not up for debate. But what is up for debate is how society treats trans people. You have a large portion of people that wants to treat them poorly as second-class citizens. And it's really telling that the bigots who advocate for that position, they have to resort to lies and hyperbole to sell discrimination to the masses, which really tells you a lot about which side of history they're on. Don't you think if they were so concerned about their position, they wouldn't have to lie? I mean, how many times have we heard that trans children are being mutilated when that's just simply not happening? Gender-affirming care for trans youth oftentimes, at the very young ages, involves social transition. Puberty blockers, when they reach the age where they're about to go through puberty, they have to lie because they know that if the spell of propaganda wore off, then most people probably wouldn't have an issue with trans people, because this is a very small portion of the population, and them being free to live their lives and pursue their dreams doesn't actually affect them. So these conservatives have to make up reasons to hate trans people. But it's all based on bullshit. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. 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 Play stupid games, F around and find out. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, gay, Pride. Trans rights are human rights. It is necessary to push trans on the kids. Pride.